And during the very early phases of the heart attack, the heart can also become electrically unstable and cause sudden cardiac death. Now, our research is actually looking at what happens many months or many years after a heart attack. And what is quite interesting is that the situation is not stable. The scar that is left in the heart from the initial heart attack keeps changing months to month, year to year. And eventually it changes in such a way that it becomes electrically unstable. And all of a sudden a patient who was otherwise completely stable has sudden cardiac death. Now there are many therapies that we have developed over the years for the treatment of heart disease. And these include medications, they include angioplasty that you may be familiar with, bypass surgery. All of these treatments, to some measure, save lives. But they pale in comparison to this treatment, which is the most effective method we have for preventing sudden cardiac death. This is known as the implantable cardioverter defibrillator. You may be familiar with this technology. You may know friends or family members that may have this technology. Basically, it consists of a battery and a computer that um, then is able to sense the electrical activity of the heart through these wires. And this is about how big it is. And what happens is that the doctors put this under the skin and the wire travels through a vein and eventually goes into the heart and it stays there permanently. And every minute of every hour of every day, it's sensing the electrical activity of the heart to make sure that the rhythm remains normal. So how is it life-saving? How does it prevent sudden death? Well, if the heart goes into a very rapid rhythm, and you've already seen these undulations in a previous slide I showed you, the computer in the device senses that this is serious and it delivers an electric shock immediately which then restores the rhythm back to normal, and that's how the patient's life is saved. Over the years, this device has become uh, very important in our management of heart rhythm problems in patients with heart disease. And this graph shows how many ICDs, or implantable defibrillators, have been implanted over the last decade in the United States, if you look at this purple line. In 2002, close to 100,000 patients in the U.S. received a defibrillator. And one of them you may recognize was Mr. Cheney. In 2009, these numbers have quadrupled. So a substantial number of people have these defibrillators to prevent sudden cardiac death. Now with all medical therapy, there are always risks and benefits. Well, we clearly know what the benefit is of a defibrillator, but there must be some risks that we need to evaluate as well. And this is a very important issue which kind of centers around what our research is all about. It turns out that not everybody who gets a defibrillator, their life will be saved. And that's simply because their risk of sudden cardiac death may not be high enough as you continue to follow them longitudinally. And so the question comes up is, how many defibrillators do we need to implant before one life is saved? Well, the best number I could give you would be one. That is to say, everybody's life. But in fact, that is not the case. In fact, 18 patients will get a defibrillator before one life is saved. And this is based on some very important studies that were published in the New England Journal of Medicine a few years ago involving thousands of patients. So then you may ask, well, what happens to the other 17 patients where this device did nothing? Well, it's important to appreciate that everybody who gets a defibrillator is being exposed to some risk. And there's risk at the time of implantation based on some US statistics. The lead may dislodge in 5% of patients. There may be bleeding and infection complications. There may be other complications involving the heart and so the overall risk is about 11%. So that's why when we evaluate patients for defibrillators, we are weighing the risk of sudden death against the risk of getting a device. And that is a very challenging equation to try and uh, put together. 
It's also important to keep in mind that these defibrillators are electronic devices and electronic devices have a very low risk of electrical failure in the order of less than 1%. But because thousands of these devices are being implanted, you can see in purple that the number of ICD malfunctions has gone up with time. And over the years, this has led to some manufacturers recalling their devices because of device-related failures and in some cases, um, the risk of death from patients who receive the device. So now let's focus back on our research and try and understand what question we're trying to address. Where is the knowledge gap? Well, we know that sudden cardiac death is a major health problem. We know that ventricular tachycardia and fibrillation is an important cause of sudden cardiac death. And we also know that defibrillators can prevent sudden death in high-risk patients. They clearly are effective therapy in high-risk patients. So this is what we need to do. We need to accurately identify those patients that are at highest risk of sudden death, and that is the objective of our research program. Now, risk assessment is very hard. That's like trying to predict the future. Um, and there are many factors that can interplay over time to cause sudden death. So how do we do it now? Well, there's a standard protocol for doing it. This is what I do day in, day out when I'm seeing patients in the clinic. I try and see how well is the patient, how much can they do. I also try and evaluate how well is the heart pumping. And if they can't do very much and their heart is pumping poorly, among other criteria, then I perceive that they may be at high risk. But the question is, how high? Are they really at very high risk? What we need to do is expand this algorithm to include more factors, more factors that provide more specific measures of the electrical instability of the heart. And so we are doing a lot of research on imaging. And what I'll talk to you about is imaging the electrical instability of the heart, the scar in the heart, and looking for abnormal genes that may be causing electrical instability. And with this complete evaluation, we believe that we can better identify the high-risk patient that will benefit from defibrillator therapy. So let's start off with the first point, imaging electrical instability. Imaging electrical instability. How do you image electricity? Can't see it, so what do you do? Well, we have focused on a very specific part of the electrical system called the T-wave. And this is kind of like the way the heart resets itself. And the T wave may not be the biggest wave of the year, but it certainly is a very important wave in the heart. And if you get an electrocardiogram done at your doctor's office and just ask to see it one day, you can see the T wave yourself. It's right there. Now, there's nothing unstable about the T wave. It's totally normal. The problem arises when the T wave starts to alternate. So this is a buzzword that I'll throw in once in a while over the next little while. The T wave alternates or oscillates. That represents electrical instability. And I'll give you a nice analogy of what I mean by that. This is the Tacoma Bridge. Many years ago, the engineers were very proud when they finished the suspension bridge. Then one day, there was a windstorm. And this thing started to sway to and fro, to and fro. It started to oscillate. And the oscillations grew and grew to the horror of everybody watching on the other side of the bridge. There's this car here that's just going back and forth and back and forth. And these oscillations stretch, stress the um, infrastructure of the bridge to the point where it collapsed. Oscillations in nature are dangerous. Oscillations of the T wave may also predict electrical instability. And this is an example of oscillations of the T wave. It's small, then the next beat it's big, then the next beat it's small, then the next beat it's big. If this pattern occurs, we have seen, this is in a patient, big, small, big, small. Do you recognize this? Ventricular fibrillation. 